in this lesson, we're going to look at the intersection of straight lines with quadratic curves and how the discriminant tells us how many solutions there are going to be. So I want you to imagine you have the equation of a straight line and the equation of a quadratic curve. If you had to work out the coordinates of the points of intersection, if there are any, you would have to solve the simultaneous equations, okay? So imagine you've solved your simultaneous equations. When you start solving, you come up with an equation to begin with, okay? So imagine your equation looks something like this, that it's in this form. If you work out the discriminant of that equation, so b squared minus 4ac, it tells you how many times the straight line and the curve intersect with each other, i.e. how many solutions there are, okay? If you haven't heard of the discriminant before, please do watch my other video and then this will make a lot more sense, okay? So if when you work out the discriminant of that equation, it's positive, so it's greater than zero, it means there are two distinct real roots. That just means the curve and the straight line intersect in two separate places, like this little sketch here, okay? If when you work out the discriminant it's equal to zero, it means that there are two equal real roots. This means the curve and the straight line intersect in just one place, like in this sketch here. So we say that the straight line is a tangent to the curve at this point. And finally, if you work out the discriminant and it's negative, so less than zero, it means there are no real roots. And so that just means the curve and the straight line don't intersect with each other, okay, like in this sketch here. So we're just going to bear that in mind and use that to help us answer some questions. In question number one, it says, find the values of k for which the line y equals kx plus one is a tangent to the curve y equals x squared minus seven x plus two. So because the straight line is a tangent to the curve, it will look something like this. And it means that when we calculate the, the discriminant, it has to equal zero. So that will help us form an equation later on that we can use to help us find the values of k, all right? Now, here's our straight line equation. Here's our equation of the curve. If we're trying to find the coordinates of the point of intersection or points of intersection, we solve the simultaneous equations, okay? So they're already rearranged so that y is the subject, so that's nice. So because y is equal to y, we know that kx plus 1 has to equal x squared minus 7x plus 2, okay? So I'm going to start by writing that down. So kx plus 1 is equal to x squared minus 7x plus 2. Okay, so this is solving the simultaneous equations. Now I have to rearrange this equation so that it looks like this, so it equals zero before I can write down the discriminant, okay? So I'm going to move kx plus one over to the right-hand side so that I have nothing left on the left-hand side. And remember, when anything moves to the other side of the equation, it changes sign. So these are both going to become negative. So we have x squared minus seven x, minus kx, and if I subtract one from two, I get one. Okay, now, before I try and work out the discriminant, I want to do one more thing, because it's not that obvious what the value of b is going to be, okay? Because I've got two x terms here. So what I suggest you do when the equation looks like this is that you factorize. So when I say factorize, I just mean this little part of the equation. You're going to factor out x. Okay, so I'm going to put plus x, and then inside the brackets here, I should have negative 7 and negative k, okay? Because if you expand those brackets, it takes you back to here. So I've just isolated the x so I can see more easily what my value of b is going to be, okay? The coefficient of x. And then don't forget to write down plus 1. So if I just write down what the values a, b, and c are, a is 1 because that's always the coefficient of x squared, and we've got one x squared here. B, I just talked about that, is negative seven, negative k. And then C is the constant, the part by itself without the x term, so it's just one. So if we're working out the discriminant, b squared minus four ac, instead of writing down b squared, I'm going to substitute this in, minus seven minus k, not forgetting to square it, then you write down minus 4 and you multiply that by a, which is 1, and c, which is also 1, okay? So let's just simplify this, expand the brackets. 
Remember when you're squaring, it means you're multiplying these brackets by themselves. And here I'm just going to calculate this because negative 4 times 1 times 1 is just negative 4. So if I expand these brackets, negative 7 times negative 7 is 49. Negative 7 times negative k is positive 7k. And negative k times negative 7 is also positive 7k, which simplifies to 14k. And then negative k times negative k is positive k squared. Okay, not forgetting the negative 4. Alright, one more step just to simplify. I've got k squared here. I've got 14k. But these terms here, 49 take away 4, I can simplify it to get 45. Now, that is the discriminant. Okay, I've just simplified it. Remember, the straight line is a tangent to the curve. So if it's a tangent to the curve, there are two equal real roots and the discriminant has to equal zero. So what you do next is you put this discriminant that you just worked out equal to zero. And remember, you're trying to find the values of k. So you're solving this quadratic equation to find the values of k. So you could either use the quadratic formula or in this one, you can just factorize. So if you're factorizing this quadratic, these two numbers here have to multiply to give 45 and add to give 14. So it should be positive 9 and positive 5. So from there, you can see the two values of k. It's either negative 9 or negative 5. Okay, so they are the values of k in question number 1. In question 2, it says find the set of values of k for which the line y equals 2x minus 1 intersects the curve y equals x squared plus kx plus 3 at two distinct points. So if you're looking at a sketch, it would look something like this one. They would intersect in two different places, which means there are two distinct real roots. And so when you work out the discriminant, it would be positive. So it would be greater than zero. So in this question, you solve the simultaneous equations again. Then you work out the discriminant from your equation. And this time, you would write down an inequality. <clears throat> so you would take your discriminant and you would write that it's greater than zero. And then you would solve that inequality to find the set of values of k. So let's do that. So just like before, the two equations are rearranged to make y the subject, so that's good. So since y is equal to y, we know that 2x minus 1 equals all of this. So I'm going to start by writing that down. So 2x minus 1 is equal to x squared plus kx plus 3. Now remember, the next step is to rearrange the equation so that it's equal to 0. So I'm going to move these terms here over to the right-hand side. Now remember, they change sign when they move across the equal sign. So this will change to a negative 2x and this will change to a positive 1. So once I move those over, I'm left with nothing on the left-hand side. So 0 equals x squared plus kx. Then I have negative 2x. And if I add 1 to 3, I get 4. Now, just like before, I want to factorise this part. So I'm going to factor out the x so that I can identify my value of b a little bit more easily. So I'm going to write down x squared plus x. And then inside the brackets, I need to have positive k and negative 2. OK, you can see when you expand those brackets, it takes you back to here. You're just rewriting it in a different way. And then not forgetting the plus 4. So my values of a, b, and c are a is 1 because we have 1x squared, b is equal to everything inside the brackets here, so k minus 2, and c is the constant at the end here, 4. So remember we have to work out the discriminant, so b squared minus 4ac. So we're just going to substitute in those values of a, b, and c that I wrote down here. So instead of b squared, we're going to have k minus 2 all squared. And then we've got minus 4 multiplied by a, which is 1, and c, which is 4. So we're expanding these brackets again. So k minus 2 times k minus 2. And here I can calculate minus 4 times 1 is minus 4. And if I times that by 4 again, I get negative 16. So let's expand these brackets. k times k is k squared. K times minus 2 is negative 2K, and negative 2 times K is also negative 2K. So negative 2K take away another 2K is negative 4K. 
Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, and then we have minus 16 at the end. So, one more step of simplifying left. If you have 4 and you take away 16, you have negative 12. So this is the discriminant, okay? Now, remember, the straight line intersects the curve in two distinct points, and we said the discriminant has to be positive. So, you need to write that it's greater than 0. Okay, so this, k squared minus 4k minus 12, is greater than 0. So we're trying to solve this quadratic inequality. If you haven't done this before, I do have another lesson on solving quadratic inequalities with more examples that will make this seem a little bit easier. So imagine this is a quadratic equation. Okay, k squared minus 4k minus 12. And I wanted to work out where that quadratic intersects the x-axis, okay? What you would do is you would just solve this quadratic equation, and when you do so, you would get the values of k or the points of intersection on the x-axis, okay? So because this is positive k squared, we know that the quadratic is this way up. If it was negative k squared, we would draw it the other way. So we want to work out where this quadratic intersects the x-axis, so I'm solving this quadratic. This is a nice quadratic that we can factorise. If you can't factorise, you can just use the quadratic formula. So these two values should be negative 6 and positive 2, because they have to multiply to give negative 12 and add to give negative 4. So my two values of k are 6 and then negative 2. Okay, so if I was to do that sketch of the quadratic, it would intersect the x-axis at 6 and negative 2, okay? Now, we haven't finished because we're solving an inequality. Here we've just solved an equation. This quadratic is greater than 0. So because it's greater than 0, you would be interested in everything above the x-axis. If it was smaller than zero, you would be interested in everything below the x-axis. So greater than zero is above, so I'm just going to colour that part in in bold. This is the part of the graph that we're interested in. So if you now consider what those values of k are, well, this is when k is 6. And if I move to the right, k is increasing, so it means k is greater than 6. Okay, that's part of the answer. Now if we look at this part. This bold part of the line is to the left of minus 2, so we're getting smaller. So the other solution would be that k is smaller than minus 2. So that's the answer to the question. When it says find the set of values of k, you're writing it as inequalities. So k is either greater than 6 or it's smaller than minus 2. In question 3, it says find the set of values of m for which the line y equals mx plus 5 does not meet the curve y equals x squared minus x plus 6. Okay, so this time the straight line and the curve, they don't intersect with each other, so it would look something like this sketch here. And so when that happens, there are no real roots, and so the discriminant is negative. It's less than 0. So we're going to solve the simultaneous equations, rearrange the equations so that it equals 0, find the discriminant, and then write down an inequality and put our discriminant less than zero. And then from there we can find the set of values of m. So because y is equal to y, we know that mx plus 5 has to equal all of this. So I'm going to start by writing that down in an equation. So mx plus 5 equals x squared minus x plus 6. Now I'm going to move everything to the right-hand side of the equation. So I have to minus mx and minus 5. So I've got 0 on the left, then x squared minus x minus mx. And if I subtract 5 from 6, I'm left with 1. Now, just like in the other examples, I'm going to factorise these terms here. So I'm going to factor out the x at the front here. And so inside the brackets, I'm going to have negative 1 and negative m, okay? Notice how I always put positive x here, okay? You want this to be a positive x, and then, so here I've got negative one and negative m, as that will take me back to here, not forgetting your plus one. All right, so this time, my values for a, well, it's the same, it's going to be one again. This time, b is negative one, negative m. 
and C is this number at the end, so positive 1. So next we're going to work out the discriminant, B squared minus 4AC. And because B is negative 1, negative M, I'm going to square that. Then you write down minus 4, and you're timesing it by A, which is 1, and C, which is also 1. Okay, so let's just simplify our discriminant. So we're multiplying out the brackets, negative 1, negative M, multiply by itself. And negative 4 times 1 is just the same, times by 1 is the same, so this is just negative 4. So let's expand the brackets. Negative 1 times negative 1 is just 1. Negative 1 times negative M is positive M. And negative M times negative 1 is also positive M. So if you add those two positive M's together, you've got 2M. And negative m times negative m is positive m squared, not forgetting to subtract 4 at the end. So I've got m squared plus 2m, and if I have 1, take away 4, I have negative 3. So there is the discriminant. And remember, because the straight line doesn't intersect the curve, we know the discriminant has to be negative. So the inequality we're trying to solve is m squared plus 2m minus 3 is smaller than 0. So we're solving another quadratic inequality. So I'm going to use the same method that I just showed you before. So let's just say this is a quadratic, okay? And if I was to do a sketch, because it's positive m squared, it would look something like this on a graph. And if I want to work out where that quadratic intersects the x-axis, I would want to solve this equation, so put the equation equal to zero. So this one, again, you can either use the quadratic formula or you can factorise, I think. So let's just see. These two numbers have to times to give negative three and add to give two, so it should be positive three and negative one. So my two values of m are going to be positive one and negative three. So if we're looking at points of intersection on the x-axis, we're saying it would intersect at 1 and negative 3. Now, this time, the inequality is less than 0, which means we're interested in everything below the x-axis. So I'm just going to shade that part of the graph in bold. So this is the part of the graph that we're interested in. So let's just consider what these values of m are. If this is when m is 1, and this is when m is minus 3, everything in between would be smaller than 1, but greater than minus 3. So this time, you could write it either like this, or if you want to write it in one go, you could also, you could say m is smaller than 1, and it's greater than minus 3. So you can either write it like this, or group it in one inequality. Essentially, it's the same thing. So they are the set of values of n for which the line does not meet the curve.